In this video, we're going to take a look at um, one example of finding domain. Uh, it's going to be a rational function, and it's going to have a square root there in the numerator. Now, to be able to do this, we've got to make sure that we know our rules for finding domain. There's two major rules that we cannot break. One says that we can't divide by zero. Okay, so if we had a rational function, that denominator cannot ever equal zero. All right, we also cannot take the square root of a negative number. That's assuming we're working in the real number system. All right, so whatever's underneath the radical, all right, that has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, equal to zero because I can't take the square root of zero and get zero. So I'm, I'm not taking <clears throat> the square root of a negative number there. So basically with this, we're gonna have to deal with two different restrictions. We're gonna have to deal with the restriction in the numerator and then the restriction in the denominator. Okay, so our top restriction, we'll do one of them at a time. Our top restriction is gonna say, okay, it's a radical and I have to have what's underneath the radical greater than or equal to zero because I cannot take square root of a negative number. So that's what I'm gonna work out algebraically. X plus three is greater than or equal to zero. Going ahead and subtracting three from both sides. X is greater than or equal to negative three. So there is my restriction for my top. All right, now if we take a look at that bottom restriction. All right, our bottom restriction, since it is in the bottom of a rational function here, that bottom cannot equal zero. So the only thing I have to do is I have to set the bottom equal to zero. So X minus three, not equal to zero. I'm trying to find the values that will make it zero. So I want exclusions here. Add three to both sides. X cannot equal uh, three. If X were three, okay, then that bottom would be zero. So this is my exclusion here. Now, initially what you're probably gonna wanna do to get the overall um, a domain here would be to look at this from a, a number line standpoint. After a while, you'll be able to do this without doing the number lines, but initially this would probably be the best way to go. So we're going to take this first restriction, x is greater than or equal to negative three, and I'm going to place it on number line, okay? So this says, here's my negative three, over here would be negative two, here would be negative four. It's all numbers greater than or equal to negative three, so then negative three would be included, and it would be all of these numbers because those are the ones that are greater than negative three. Then I'm gonna take my second restriction here. I'm gonna say X cannot equal three, okay? So again, three would be over here somewhere if we're trying to draw this proportional, okay? So it can be all other numbers, but not the three. So open dot on three, all of these numbers would be included in my domain and all of these numbers would be. Okay, now what I need to do is I just need to overlap these number lines. All right, I'm going to combine these two number lines and anything that is shaded on both the top and the bottom number line is going to be in my domain. Okay, so I'm going to combine the graphs. All right, so nothing down here because it's only on one. Starting at negative three, that, that's where my first value is that they have in common. So I'm gonna shade in negative three. All the values are in common up until we get to three. But when we get to three, three is shaded on this number line, but not this one. So that means that has to be an open dot right there. And then going past three, all of them would be in common. Okay, so I combined both of those number lines into one. All right, now, most of the time, we always need our domain in interval notation. So now from this number line, I can take my domain, write it in interval notation. I'm gonna have a, a section right here, which would be a square bracket to the, from negative three all the way up to three, but with a curvy bracket, because I'm not including three. I'm gonna skip over three, there's our union. We'll do open bracket on three again, and then all of the other values all the way up to positive infinity. Okay, so like I said, initially, you're probably going to want to draw these three number lines, draw your first restriction on the number line, draw your second restriction on the number line, and then combine the number lines. That what is shaded on both of them is included in your final graph. And then from there, you can easily look at that and go to interval notation for your domain. Eventually, you will get to the place where you don't have to do the visual here probably, and you can just look at these restrictions and go straight to your domain. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.